that. Look at the people in here. So nice to see you. Oh, um, so let's start. Father, now, bless your word. In Jesus' name, amen. So I'd like to start um, this morning with uh, a text. And um, here we go. <laughs> Uh, oh, okay. How about I read the first uh, verse, and I'll invite you guys to read the second one with me. Uh, the man asked him, what is your name? Jacob, he answered. One, two, three. Then the man said. With me, and have overcome. Ah, the, t- the sermon's title is Naming. Um, and I had to put that because my other title was What Your Name Is, and I didn't know if that would make much sense to everyone else. So while I'm at home, I'm like, what your name is? I'm dancing around my house. Uh, my name is kind of long. My name is Mikaele Kinisa Tefano Divo, but uh, most of you guys know me as Mika, but that's not the name on my birth certificate. The name on my birth certificate is Mike Kini Tololo, and you're like, What? So when I got in middle school, uh, as I was getting ready to go to school, my mom looked at me and said, uh, your name is Sete. And I said, what? She said, Sete. And Sete is half, is the English version of her maiden name, which is Setefano. So I went to school. Teacher called my name, Toilolo. I didn't say anything. And they looked at me. They go, aren't you Toilolo? And I said, no, Sete. And they said, how does that work? I said, Sete. In Samoa, or in Samoa, um, changing your name is not a court thing. It is what your mom says it is. So mom said, uh, your name's Sete, you just go to school. What's your name? Sete. When I went, the last time I went to Samoa, I met my uncle, the one I'm named after, Mika. I called him Uncle Mika, and my mom about lost her mind. She said, eh. I was like, what? She said, that's not his name. I said, I grew up calling him Uncle Mika. What am I supposed to call him now? She said, Vaitsnu. You don't have to, no testing. And I said, Vaitsnu what? And then she told me, I said, well, how does that work? She said, that's his chief name. You are no longer able to call him by his uncle name. And I was like, oh. So the idea of coming across a text that says your name is no longer, now your name is, it's not a mystery to me. We do that all the time. And in fact, as I grew up with Mike Sete, uh, I was hanging out with my stepdad. Um, We were living in Seattle, and I was in college, and my stepdad said to me, he goes, son, uh, I raised you. I said, yep. He said, I raised your sisters. I said, yep. And he goes, you know, the only one that has my name, Devo, is your youngest sister. I said, yep. Then he just kind of shook his head and did like he always does. He didn't speak a whole lot of English, so he just went silent. So before I graduated college, I decided to change my name to Devo so that when he would come to school and see me graduate, he would hear his name. That was for him. And then I changed my name from Mike to Mika because um, that's who I'm named after, Mikaele, which is my uncle. And I was laughing because my mom, you know, she grew up in a place where, or when she came to the States, it was really hard for her to get along. Her English wasn't good. So she tried to Americanize her children as much as she can. So we've got the most Americanized names. Mike originally. My sister's name is Maggie. How much more can you get? My other sister's name is Dorothy. My other sister's name is Wanda. And then Mona. Mona is, that was from my stepfather, so that was a little bit island as well. So when I changed my name from Mike to Mika, I felt better. I felt like, oh, that's what I think I'm supposed to be named. 
In fact, I could imagine my mom, because her English was so limited, I'm sure that the nurse said, <laughs> I'm sure that the nurse said, um, uh, when my mom said Mike, the nurse probably said, uh, do you mean Michael? She goes, eh, no, Mike. Why are you telling me what you think I mean? Because <laughs> that's the way she does me. And um, so um, my name became what it is now. And in fact, when I was getting married, uh, what I discovered is that when I went to the lawyer the first time in college to change my name, I did it wrong. So I had to change my name from Devo on my ID back to Toilolo on my birth certificate, then change it back to Sete, and then back to Devo. And it was a long process. And the lawyer made a little bit of money off of me. Thanks, Sergio. So I like this idea of naming. Naming, because Jacob, Jacob was a man that started in struggle, even as a baby. And when he came out, he was number two, but because he was grabbing his brother's foot on his way out, they gave him the name of heel grabber. In other words, Jacob. That's what it means to grab heel, to uh, follow, to have a plan behind, to, uh, to do something behind someone else. He is the man with a plan. In fact, if you read his whole story, he always has a plan to get ahead of someone else. He is like Hannibal of 18. He is like Mark, Mark Wahlberg of the Italian job. He's like Vin Diesel of the Fast and Furious. He's like, now, nah, I'm going to stop right there. He is the man that knows what he's doing. In fact, when you get a chance to read his story, it's, it's pretty cool. He is the son of a son of a man whose name was changed in the first place. Remember when Abram became Abraham? This is not the first name change in this family. Name changing is a normal thing in his family, but not everybody just gets to change their name. When God said to Abram, Abram, it's time for you to have a son, and through that son, I will bless everyone. And whoever you give the right to gain this right, his family will be the one to bless everyone. And so Jacob looked at it and said, I want that. I want that so bad that I will trick my brother into giving me the right to be the leader of the family that would bless all nations. I want that, the man with a plan. That's who Jacob was. And when Jacob made the plan, he walks into the room covered with hair from an animal to make his arms seem hairy, rub some outside Pacific Northwest dirt so that he could smell like the great outdoors and walked up to his father. Father, he said, who are you? He said, my name is Esau. No, it isn't. See, what we get here is we get him trying to give himself a name, but he already has a name, and the only way his name will change is if God gives him a different name. He says, my name is Esau, and his dad said, well, come here. Well, you smell like your brother felt his arms, you feel like your brother, but I can't help but think, who are you really? He goes, I'm, Dad, I'm, I'm your favorite son, Esau. He says, okay, uh, what did you bring me? I brought you some roasted lamb. And if you guys know about food, whoo, man, some of the best food is roasted. I know, some of you guys are vegetarians, so I don't mean to offend you. But if you want to eat good, roasted carrot, is that a food? No, I'm messing with you. Um, I was, uh, I was uh, hanging out with my son, and we had to go find something to do. I was like, oh, what are we going to do? He's like, I don't know, Dad. I said, I got it. So I said, uh, we're going to go eat, because I have to train them the island way. We're going to go eat. So he said, what are we going to eat? I said, I know. We're going to eat a gyro or a gyro for some of us that you know, speak a different language. <laughs> and he goes, what's that? I said, oh, my goodness. I've never taken you out for a gyro. And he goes, no, Dad, I don't know what that is. So 
I remember a conversation, and you guys can go ask them later, but Sergio and Soren told me that the best gyro in all of Seattle is in, and I was like, oh, man. In fact, Soren looked at me, and he goes, yes, I have eaten gyros all over the world, and he has, and he said, the best one, I promise you, Mika, is in the U District. I said, what? He said, yeah, it's at this restaurant called Aladdin. And I went there, I said, no, this is Aladdin. What are you <laughs> So I called um, <laughs> Aladdin. So I called Sergio. Before I got there, I was like, Sergio, where is it? He goes, it's in the U District. I said, I see two on the map. He said, ah, okay, I'll send you the right one. So he sends me the right one. I get there with my son. My son's looking at the menu. I'm looking at the menu. I don't know what to order. All I know is to say is, um, what's your most ordered thing? Because... You should see me in menus. I don't get along with menus. I don't like menus. I don't like reading menus. Don't give me a big menu. I will not go to Cheesecake Factory because their menu is too big. <laughs> you ever been to Cheesecake Factory? It's like 20 pages worth of menu. They had it to me. I said, no, thank you. They go, what do you want? I said, you got salad with crispy chicken? They go, yeah, I said, that one. So anyway, he says, uh, what is it, lamb and beef? Lemon. Oh, lamb and beef. You know. So I get it. My son gets it. We sit down. They bring the food over to us. My son looks at it. He picks up his pita. He goes, how do I eat it, Dad? I said, just don't spill it. Just Sticks in his mouth, and I go, how is it? All he does is, <laughs> like, it's good, huh? He goes, yeah, Dad. How come we've never had this before? I said, because your dad's still learning how to be a dad. Man, that was so good. So this, this food that he brought to the old man was his old man's favorite food. And it was the food that his favorite son brought to him. So if he brought him this food, he knew, one, he smelled like him. Two, he felt like him. Three, he feeds me like him. This must be Esau, my son, but it's not. And then after he feeds him, he goes, can I have the blessing? And the father looks at the son, not looks at the son. He, his vision is not good. This is why he doesn't know his son is tricking him. And he says, okay, son, I will bless you to have the right of the firstborn. Your family will be the family that God promised me to be the one that will bless the rest of the world. And he's like, whoa. He says, yes, son, you will have all that I have to give. Please receive this and receive this and receive this. And this dude just lied his way into a blessing. Earlier, he had already tricked his brother into giving him other rights, and now he has everything. He has tricked his father. He has tricked his brother. He's got a plan. He's got it all going on, and now what does he do? His brother comes in after him, and his brother says, Dad, I'm here. And he goes... You smell like Esau. And he goes, yes, this is Esau, your son, and I brought you your favorite food. He goes, but you were already here. And he said, what? He said, son, I've, I've already eaten with you, and I've already blessed you, and I've given you everything I could give you. He goes, that wasn't me. Well, who was it? Oh, it's my brother. I know it's comedy. And his mother was in on it, too. And what is hard to notice, unless you read scripture very carefully, what is hard to notice is that as soon as he said, my name is Esau, he didn't use his name again for 20 years. He just wouldn't call himself Jacob. You can read the scripture, it'll call him Jacob, but he won't say his own name. In fact, he runs away from his brother, gets to his relative's house, and they say, who are you? You know what he says? He says, I am the cousin of yours. I am the son of Rebecca. Yeah, but what is your name? I'm your cousin and the son of your auntie. He cannot say his name because his name has a meaning. And the meaning is heel grabber. One with the plan. One that deceives. One that takes things that don't really belong to him. That's his name, but he can't deal with it anymore. That's why he's on the run. And for 20 years, he's on the run. 20 years, he has a plan. 20 years, he gets rich. 20 years, he has servants. 20 years, he has two wives, other kids. And now he's finally in a place where he has to go home. 
But at home, like for many of us, home is a place where you can't lie. Home is a place where people already know you. So whether you've grown up to be a man and be on this side or that side, the people that know you or knew you when, what's up, Mikey? You still telling jokes? <laughs> you can't do a whole lot. So he has to prepare his spirit. What am I going to do when I get home? The first person I have to deal with is my brother. Because when I left, my brother was flaming, angry. And my brother was about ready to get me. And my brother was about ready to kill me. And I had to run away. That's what mama said, so I ran away. And now he's about ready to meet his mom, or rather his brother. And he is worried. And I get that. You guys ever had anyone angry at you? Not you, man. Nobody's angry at you. You're a farmer. Nobody's mad at you. No, I'm asking. You're a lawyer. That's why everyone's mad at you. No, I'm asking. So people are just, he's stressed out. He's worried. And I get that. I remember when I was, so I grew up in an island household, as you guys know. And in island households, the words, um, go to your room, you're in timeout. I didn't know that existed. What I remember was come here and bring a rope, <laughs> bring a belt, bring a twig. And if you don't move fast enough, that chair is going to be, man, go to your room, time out. I remember I, when I first heard that, I was like, what does that mean? They said, they're in trouble. I said, go into your room? <laughs> don't call 911. You know. <laughs> But so the comedy is, I do that now. When I get really upset with my kids, get out of my face, just go. But that, I, I don't want to hear it. I don't, I don't have the energy. Just leave before I say something I don't want to say. Just. So he's stressed out. Lord, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? What am I going to do? You've blessed me. You've taken care of me. I've done all these things, but I know deep inside I'm still a deceiver. And remember now, this is 20 years after he ran away. He has yet to use his name. He's still running. So what he does, he takes his family. He says, listen, um, I'm about ready to meet my brother. So what I need you to do is I need you to split in two groups. Because if he kills one, I'll at least have another one. That's how serious this is. And he takes his goods and he splits them into three, maybe four, five parties. And he says, listen, what I want you to do is I want you to go before my family. And when you meet my brother, just say to my brother, Esau, my Lord, your the Lord has been good to your brother. These are yours. And then you, the second group, when you meet him, you tell him the same thing. And the third group, you tell him the same thing. And the fourth group. So what he's trying to do is he's trying to, you know, bribe his brother. Because his brother's mad. And if you, if you get a chance to read about his brother, his brother is what we know as a manly man. You know, the kind that opens up pickle jars on the first try. You know, that kind of man. Ooh. The, the manly man, the one that showers with Irish spring, you know. What's that? Oh, <laughs> clearly I don't know what a manly man is. What's that? Thor, Thor. Oh, Thor. I got to stop letting my little daughter watch Marvel movies because now she's starting to have crushes. You too? Oh my goodness. For those of you that are fans of Stranger Things, she thinks Noah Schnapp is the cutest boy that's ever lived. Oh, I know, I'm like, what is this? He's a skinny kid. She's like, oh, but he's so cute. Okay, that's it. No more Stranger Things for you. you Gotta protect you, let me change your name. <laughs> no, I did. Mess in there, I'm messing around there. So he's about ready to meet his brother. He sends off Herd, tell my brother you belong to him. Herd, tell my brother you belong to him. Herd, tell my brother you belong to him. And he keeps doing it. Then he finally sends off his family. 
And he sits there alone, and now it's dark, and he's, he's stressed out. And I imagine that he's praying or meditating or however he was doing his thing, trying to figure out what he needs to do next. And the weirdest thing happens, he ends up in a wrestling match. Now, why that isn't strange, I don't know. I don't like sit somewhere praying and then I start wrestling. I... Oh, I... <laughs> Must have been the scent of Irish Spring or something. So the Bible says he's wrestling and he's struggling and he's fighting and it's dark. And, oh, let me read it to you. Left alone. And a man wrestled with him till daybreak. And when the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was wrenched And he, as he wrestled with the man. In other words, this dude was struggling with him all night long. He said to Jacob, Jacob, let me go. He said, no, I won't let you go until you bless me. And so they're wrestling and they're fighting. And we, we don't have a good idea who this is. All we know is that he struggles with something, someone, out of the dark. He's struggling. And in fact, his name means struggle. To deceive, to struggle with, to come behind the man with the plan. This is what his name means. And as he continues to struggle, Scripture tells us this. Then the man said, let me go for it's daybreak. Jacob says, I won't let you go till you bless me. Then the man asked him, what's your name? It's crazy. For 20 years, he hasn't used his name. To his servants, he's been called master. To his wives, he's been called husband. To his father-in-law, he's been son of mine. All this time, he has been making it through life without using his own name. And he looks at Jacob, he says, Jacob, we're wrestling, we're fighting. Who are you called? What is your name? And there's a pause in here. Not in here. But there's a pause in the story. Because we know enough to know he doesn't like saying his name. And he finally says it. Now, the thing I like about this name, for us, it's just a name. Jacob, we hear it all the time. How would you like to have a name like Deceiver? Because that's what his name means. What's your name? Deceiver. Dang. That's a horrible name. When I was in Korea and I was teaching these, um, my students, they had the best nicknames ever. My two favorite names was, one guy was Super, the other guy was Market. And I said, what? They looked at me and they said, Supermarket. <laughs> I said, man, that's clever. But this one, he's looking at me and says, okay, wrestling, what's your name? And he finally says his name after 20 years of not saying his name. He finally got to a place where he can... Tell this person what he's really about. And, and, the, and the craziness is, is, his request is, I want to be blessed. And it's as if the question is, I can't bless you unless you tell me who you are. You can't tell me you're like known by a different name because the blessing will go to someone different. See, if I went to the Lord and I said, Lord, bless me, and he said, who are you? And I said another name, that blessing would belong to someone else. It's not coming to me. So in order for the Lord to bless him, he has to know who he is. And in that knowing who he is, there is confession. Who are you? I'm the deceiver. Who are you? I'm the heel grabber. Who are you? I'm the one that has made plans to cheat everybody I know to get what I have right now. And the Lord says, now, now I can bless you. Because you know who you are. I can't bless people that don't know who they is. Who they are. It's hard for the Lord to bless a person. That person 
doesn't even know their name. Prayer is this thing that happens, and it happens when you're vulnerable. It happens when you know that you're praying in your, in your person. And when we ask, and we do it all the time, when we ask the Lord to bless, what I learned this week is that he can't bless a man that doesn't even know his own name. What's your name? In that dark place, just on the other side of the river, it's that wrestling match where you get to wrestle with God and man. and It's a dangerous place to be. And I like to think about that place because this 24-7 at Jubilee Reach, it's a dangerous place to be. Because our wrestle isn't always with somebody we know. Sometimes our wrestling is just in the dark, just wrestling. And maybe in that place in the dark, you get to hear something. Whether it's through music, through food, through greeting, through word. God begins to speak. But I'm trying to get to a place where God, before I can fully understand you, I have to fully know who I am. Who are you? Jacob. Then the man said, your name will no longer be who? Jacob. What's your name, Jacob? Not anymore. Why not? Because now I know that you know, and now I'm about ready to do something in your life. What are you going to do? I'm going to change your name to Israel. What does Israel mean? Israel means that I've not only fought with humanity, I've not only fought with myself, but I fought with God, and now you're an overcomer, and because you're an overcomer, I'm changing your name. Ooh. Watch this, watch this, watch this. That's a dangerous place to be. This is a dangerous place to be. Richard's Road was a dangerous place to be. I don't know when your struggle comes. And many times our struggle is just, you know, it's not visible to everybody else. You're praying, and in your prayer, you're stressed. And in your stressness, you fall into wrestling. And in your wrestling, you have to get to a place where you know who you are. Hmm. Oh, I've got a lot of confession to do, but I know better than to do it here. My professor told us once, he says, listen, when you're preaching, it's okay to use your audience as a, you know, you can share some things. But just don't throw up on them. I'll share, but I don't want to throw up. Children of the living God, what's your name? And in that time of struggle, whether it be in the middle of a song, in the middle of prayer, even in the midst of an argument, can I ask you that? Thank you. Even in the midst of arguing, God's question rings back. What's your name? And if we can get to a place of, Lord, this is me. This is really, 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 really me. Well, who are you? Well, I've not told anyone this. Not in, even in 20 years. Well, who are you? Um, deceiver. Who are you? Angry. Who are you? I take money that doesn't belong to me. Who are you? I act happier than I really am. Who are you? I don't really know how to interact with people because I don't want them to see who I am. 
Who are you? You can fill in the blank. That struggle is real. That fight is real. And it seems like it's just out of the blue with a random man. After the fight, Jacob said to God, or to the person he's wrestling with, tell me, what's your name? God doesn't say anything. And I can't help but think, Jacob, you know me. I'm just going to leave it there. Because you'll call me again. And then Jacob says, he gave the place a name. It's because I saw God face to face. And I'm living to tell about it. Ooh, people of the living God. Watch us now. Whether it be here, whether it be at home, the struggle is real. And when we're wrestling, know this question will come. Son, daughter, they, I want to bless you. Please, Lord, bless me. I can't bless you unless you know your name. I'm, uh, I'm learning my name. I'm praying that we know our names. Because when the Lord God Almighty asks to bless you, you can give him the name of who you are so that he can bless you as you are to be an overcomer, an overcomer, an overcomer.